If you give in once, you will be one, annoyed at yourself for giving in, two, making it much easier for the food pushers to keep pushing as they have already seen you give in. Dr. Cashy here to remind you to don't stop believing. I find it pertinent to discuss the used car salesman of food pushers right now. Something that really bugs me. These are people who no matter what you really say about what you want, they only hear what they want to hear and keep trying to push their own agenda on you. And that agenda is their snacks and your face. Since a lot of people have absolutely zero desire for conflict, they typically give in without a fight, which only reinforces the sabotaging behavior of that food pusher. This feeling is even stronger when it comes to family. A lot of times when families gather, they eat and drink with abandon. And not only that, they try and force you to do the same thing and make you feel terribly awkward if you don't, or make you feel guilty as if you're a bad person for not actively destroying Destroying your body. And then if you do give in after telling them you have goals, they make fun of you for that too. The whole thing is just crappy. It's so confusing. So in the process of placating these people, you may lose progress. It may even be worse off than when you started. You can deal with this without building resentment and it can go one of two ways. One, you have to decide why are they pushing all this on you? Is it because they want you to participate? Or is it because these people are really trying to get you to destroy the progress you've made? It can really be one or the other. Don't give anyone the benefit of the doubt, especially because a lot of food pushers will push food and drink on you because it helps justify their own behavior. And if you aren't participating, they're are the ones who feel guilty. Citing things like, well, you've always done this. How come you don't want to do it now? Or even worse, it's tradition. Various other things until you just can't deal with it anymore and you shut them up by hurting yourself. Because that's what you're doing, you're hurting yourself. And if they're gonna act like a broken record, you can act like a broken record too. Just one more serving. No thanks. Oh, come on. Just one more. No thanks. Oh, you're not any fun. You never just have one of these things. No thanks. What is your problem? No problem. No thanks. Do you not want to have any fun? When you let loose, you're always more fun. No thanks. We get to together as friends and family and we do this every time. Do you not want to do that? Do you want to ruin that? No thanks. You may as well just do it now. Eventually you're going to give in. No thanks. Wow, you seem pretty serious. Are you okay? No thanks. Whoa, <laughs> okay then. No thanks. Now that you've contended with one of those people, they might even go bitch to someone else who might try and push on you again. Bring it on. The technique of being just as annoying to them as, as they are to you is definitely more effective. The internal struggle for you is to determine if you have the capacity to deal with uncomfortability about using it. The technique itself is easy, but employing it, you know, no, whatever. At this point, you have to decide whether or not the juice is worth the squeeze. You can stand your ground and make progress, or you can shrivel and go backwards. Or you can shut them up temporarily, and you have months of work ahead of you because of it. So, and that's because you give in to what they feed you, by the way. That's where the extra months of work comes in. No thanks. Are you having to deal with an annoying person temporarily? Or are you having to deal with the eternal struggle of making it for lost time and getting yourself out of the hole you've dug? Always. Remember, you can literally repeat the same thing over and over. They have to come up with new material. <laughs> if you say no thanks, they have to come up with another the reason to overcome your objection, but you can use the same objection every time. It's genius. No thanks. They'll eventually run out of things to say. Keep in mind that a lot of people who are pushing food on you may feel entitled to see the rationale on your end, but you're not required to provide this at all, really. You do not need to tell them why you are changing. To some degree, to a lot of degrees, telling them why you are changing your habits gives them more ammunition to argue with you. Trying to discuss fitness and health and lifestyle and all this other stuff is really just gonna let them sink their teeth into you more. So if you really do want to provide rationale, provide it out of context and having nothing to do with any of your goals in relation to your fitness and health. A simple, no thanks, maybe later. Or, no thanks, I don't want it. Or, no thanks, I've tried it already. No thanks, I'm full. This rationale is plenty good if you feel compelled to give it, because that is rationale. Dealing with these people is annoying, but what's even more annoying is the consequences of not dealing with them. This is the single best tool at your disposal. No thanks. So, summary. Be consistent with your, no thanks. If you give in once, you will be, one, annoyed at yourself for giving in, two, making it much easier for the food pushers to keep pushing as they have already seen you give in. Stay strong. No need for details about why you're saying no thanks. Just say it and say it good. Don't stop believing. No thanks.